Within the vast skies that cover our planet, there are places where humans are strictly prohibited from entering. These forbidden airspaces serve various purposes, from safeguarding national security to preserving natural wonders. Join me, I'm gonna count down the top 15 most forbidden airspaces that you can't enter. Starting with number 15, the Kennedy Space Center. First used in 1949 for launch operations and then developed through the 1950s as a space launch center and then substantially in the 1960s to fulfill JFK's dream of sending people to the moon, the Kennedy Space Center is on Merritt Island in Florida and is by far the most famous and used spaceport in the world. Covering an area of 219 square miles, it's also the focal point of Florida's space coast and a hugely important tourist destination, as well as being the location of several crucial manufacturing and processing sites, such as the Space Station Processing Facility, the Multi-Payload Processing Facility, and the Vehicle Assembly Building, which holds the record of being the largest single-story structure on the planet. Operated by NASA, the Kennedy Space Center is also one of the most secure sites in Florida, with particular awareness that foreign powers may well want to get a glimpse of what's going on there to steal secrets for themselves. This national security concern would normally be deemed enough to warrant aerospace restrictions above the site, but of course, the Kennedy Space Center has another important reason why aircraft don't pass over. As the place where rockets are regularly sent into space, it would be far too dangerous to allow planes to fly over it too. So unless there's an express permission by the military, it and an exclusion zone around it are strictly off-limits to aircraft of any type. Number 14. Machu Picchu it was originally built in the 15th century. Machu Picchu is the most famous archaeological site of the Inca Empire. It's in the eastern Andes in southern Peru, and it's positioned on a mountain ridge at an altitude of about 7,900 feet above sea level, and is believed to have been constructed as an estate for the Incan emperor Pachacuti, who ruled between 1438 and 1472. With no written language, Machu Picchu is one of the most important sites to understand the lives of the Inca, with countless artifacts having been found there and the potential for far more to still be discovered. It has, of course, also become a hugely important tourist destination that's visited by hundreds of thousands of people each year and supports the local economy too. The first step to protect it was taken in 1981, when an almost 126 square mile region around Machu Picchu was declared to be a historic sanctuary. But more recently, a new thread has been emerging. Access to the site involves walking across some tricky terrain, and a number of companies were, instead, offering helicopter tours to see it from above. On some days, the skies above Machu Picchu would have several choppers at a time flying around, often at low altitudes, which affected the peace of the place. There were concerns, too, that flyovers were releasing pollution in the area which could damage the wildlife, and in worst-case scenario, any accident with an aircraft would not only result in people needing to be rescued from a place that's tricky to access, but would also risk permanently damaging Peru's most important agent site. With all those concerns in mind, a no-fly zone was established around the entire sanctuary in 2006, and it's remained in place ever since. Number 13. Budapest the city of Budapest is the capital of Hungary, and it's a stunning metropolitan area on the banks of the Danube River. The reason it's such an impressive place is because of its history, with the origins of Budapest dating back to the Roman times when a small Celtic settlement was turned into a quincum, which became the capital of Lower Pannonia. Over the following centuries, it was conquered by the Hungarians, the Mongols, the Hungarians again, and then the Ottomans and then the Hungarians again, and at one time it was known as Buda. In 1873, though, it was combined with two other towns, Obuda and Pest, and was renamed Budapest, becoming the co-capital of the Austro-Hungarian Empire until the end of the First World War, and then subsequently the capital of Hungary. Each time Budapest was taken over, parts of it were destroyed and rebuilt in the new ruler's architecture, and this has left a fascinating blend of styles throughout the city. Now an important global city with 12 million tourists visiting each year along with the headquarters of several important European institutions and more than 40 colleges and universities, the central area of the city was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site because of the classic architecture, and it's also home to some of the largest thermal water cave systems in the world, the second largest synagogue and the third largest parliament building on the planet. With further important buildings such as historical monuments like Buda Castle and Sandor Palace, along with modern ones such as the National Bank and the base of the Hungarian Homeland Defense Forces, the Hungarian government decided that it was simply too much of a risk to a number of strategically vital sites to allow aircraft to fly overhead. So they took the decision to create a no-fly zone over the entire city. 
Number 12. Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness Most no-fly zones in the U.S. at least were only made permanent fairly recently, but there's one surprising place that has had restrictions ever since President Truman signed an executive order in 1949, and it's the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness in Minnesota. Covering an area of nearly 1,700 square miles and stretching for 150 miles along the border with Canada, the wilderness area is part of the Superior National Forest and is made up of forests, glacial lakes, and streams. Almost 20% of its total area is water, including more than 1,100 lakes, and it was so clear that this was a special place that the first laws to protect it were put in place during the 1900s. Since then, a series of acts have been signed into law to further protect the region, with the intent to preserve and enhance the lakes, waterways, and forests, completely banning destructive practices like mining and logging. The use of vehicles, too, was seen as a risk to the area, though, which saw the initial ban on flying through the airspace, both to prevent damage and to maintain the tranquil setting. But this was just the beginning of the limitations. In 1978, the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness Act was signed by President Jimmy Carter, and this further restricted the use of motorboats to just 24% of the lakes in the region, banned the use of snowmobiles in more than 99% of the land, and increased the limitations of where road vehicles are able to go as well. This, then, is one of the most vehicle-free places in all of the U.S., and significantly, it benefits from it. Number 11. The Parthenon Built between 447 and 432 BC, the Parthenon, which is on a hill in Athens, Greece, was a temple dedicated to the goddess Athena, and the sculptures that adorn the structure are regarded as some of the most impressive of all ancient Greek art that have survived to modern days. Interestingly, it underwent a number of changes over the years, such as being used as a treasury and a Christian church in the 6th century, and a mosque after the Ottoman conquest in the 15th century and then it suffered extreme damage during fighting in the 17th century. Following this, a number of the artworks were removed and taken elsewhere, including the famous Elgin marbles that are still controversially held in the British Museum. But despite it no longer being the marvel that it once was, the Parthenon is still an extremely important historical site, and it's undergone a number of restoration projects since the 1970s. As an enduring beacon of ancient Greece in Athens, the Parthenon is one of the most recognizable buildings from antiquity anywhere in the world, and it attracts millions of people every year. But having been subjected to such damage, too, it's regarded as being extremely fragile, so there are a number of restrictions in place in an attempt to preserve it. One of these is a strict regulation over the airspace above it, with fears that an aircraft may crash and cause substantial damage. Specifically, no one is allowed to fly at an altitude of less than 5,000 feet over the Parthenon, with extreme penalties in place for anyone who breaches that limit. Number 10. Sellafield Nuclear Site The world has, unfortunately, seen all too well what can happen when someone that's in control of an aircraft decides to use it as a weapon, and this has led to a number of flight restrictions being put in place across the globe to prevent anyone from having the opportunity to do something that would cause a massive loss of life or severe damage to national infrastructure. Because of their nature, most nuclear power plants have airspace restrictions around them, including the Sellafield nuclear site in the northwest of the UK. First built as a Royal Ordnance Factory in 1942 during the Second World War, where it would, by the end of the decade, produce plutonium for use in nuclear weapons. It was in 1956 that the Calder Hall Nuclear Power Station was opened on the site, which became the first in the world to produce electricity that was exported on a commercial scale to a national grid. The site has, however, been controversial, originally because it was the location of the first nuclear power station accident in which radioactive contamination was released into the environment after the uranium metal fuel in one of the reactors ignited. It would, though, continue to produce electricity until 2003 and be used as a nuclear fuel reprocessing site until 2022. And while these operations have now ended, there's still a huge amount of nuclear material on the site. The plan is for it to be completely decommissioned by 2120 at a cost of nearly $130 billion. And this has actually meant that the security around it has been intensified in case it's seen as an easy target by potential attackers. Aircraft breaching the exclusion perimeter around Sellafield are given one chance to turn around, otherwise it'll be subjected to a shoot-down-now, ask-questions-later response, such is the fear that a catastrophic event could be triggered. This type of approach is similar to what would happen if anyone tried to fly too close to any reactor in the United States or elsewhere in the world. As while they are built to be able to withstand any events that could lead to a meltdown, 
it's just not worth the risk of death and destruction that would be caused if these protective measures weren't adequate. Number 9. The Taj Mahal Commissioned in 1631 and completed by 1643, the Taj Mahal was built by the 5th Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan as a mausoleum to house the tomb of his wife, Mumtaz Mahal. The emperor's tomb was also placed there following his death, in what's seen as not only the jewel of Muslim art in India, but as one of the most impressive and recognizable structures on the planet. Amazingly, between 7 to 8 million people visit every year, which is a level of fame that Shah Jahan couldn't have envisioned when he first came up with the idea. Set over a 42-acre complex, which also contains a mosque, a guest house, and formal gardens, it's believed as many as 20,000 artisans were involved in its construction, and it took inspiration from a number of other Mughal buildings. Of course, it's the main white marble tomb that's the focal point of the site, and it's just as important for archaeologists to learn about the ancient empire as it is for tourists who want selfies alongside it. Because of its age, there have long been concerns about its condition, and authorities have at certain times had to go to extreme lengths to protect it. During the Second World War in 1942 and also during the India-Pakistan Wars in 1965 and 1971, the entire building was surrounded by scaffolding to conceal it and hopefully protect it should enemy aircraft decide to target it. Pollution has also become a concern, particularly in recent years, which at one point saw the white marble of the Taj Mahal begin to turn yellow. So in response, a 4,000 square mile area around it was established in which strict emission standards are in effect. There's also concerns with the falling levels of the nearby river that the structural integrity is weakening, and anything that has the potential to cause unnecessary vibrations has also been banned. This includes aircraft passing over which was completely allowed until the middle of last decade, when a new law was passed following a petition by archaeologists and the Taj Mahal security services and instated a permanent no-fly zone over the entire site. Number 8. Paris Home to around 20% of the total population of France, Paris is visited by an estimated 50 million people each year, and it's also the second busiest airline destination in the world. This doesn't mean, though, that the skies are full of aircraft, as the government's been careful to ensure the routes in and out of the major airports don't affect the daily lives or safety of those in the city. There's a reason why the city is such a popular place, and that's because it's attracted artists, writers, performers, and visionaries from across the globe for hundreds of years. As a hub of European art, literature, music, cinema, and cuisine, it's also an architecturally stunning place, with world-famous landmarks such as the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre Museum, the Notre Dame Cathedral, and many, many more. At the center of French life is where you'll also find a number of important buildings and institutions, such as the French Parliament, the headquarters of UNESCO, the International Federation for Human Rights, and the European Space Agency, which as well as establishing it as a vital city also means there's a lot of potential targets to those who mean to do harm. It used to be that flying over the city wasn't a problem, but following the events in 2001, an extremely strict set of aerospace regulations was introduced. While the general Paris region can be flown over by commercial airlines, it's the airspace below 6,500 feet over downtown Paris that are expressly forbidden, and this rule extends to model aircraft and drones as well. Furthermore, there are a few other zones further away from the city center, such as the business district that are also covered by the rules, with only the prefecture of police allowed to make special dispensation when air surveillance and air ambulances are needed, or on occasion high-profile VIP flights as well. Breaking these restrictions will see the offending aircraft either shot down if it's safe to do so without causing collateral damage on the ground, or up to 10 years in prison for potentially endangering innocent lives. Moving on to number 7. Disneyland and Disney World Disneyland in California and Disney World in Florida are two of the most popular attractions in the United States, attracting millions of people from across the country and the world each year. Originally opened in 1955 and 1971, respectively, they've become known as the happiest places on Earth. But while to the paying guests, Disney represents joy and magic, behind the scenes, the company is ruthless in protecting its own image and interests. Famously, in Florida, it has virtually governmental level of control over the land it owns, and perhaps surprisingly, it's the only privately owned space in the country in which there are stringent airspace restrictions. This wasn't always the case, but in 2003, the company somehow managed to get itself included in a congressional spending bill a few weeks before the start of the Iraq War that designated the sky above the parks as national defense airspace. 
This means that any type of unauthorized aircraft flying over the Magic Kingdom is subject to interception, with anyone involved in the flight risking interrogation and federal prosecution. At first, you might think that this is to protect the Disney sites, because as such famous places, they may be at risk from targeted attacks. But there's nothing in similar places for other nearby venues, such as Universal Studios or Knott's Berry Farm. In fact, some lawmakers have said they'd petition to rescind the airspace restrictions if it wasn't for the bill that was passed in 2003, as the suspicion is that there's another motive for why Disney wanted this put in place. Prior to the rules, it was common for competitors and other companies like law firms to fly aerial advertisements for other parks over the Disney parks, and as many as 100 aerial advertising companies went out of business following the new laws. While it certainly makes for a more pleasant experience by not there being planes constantly flying overhead, it is a fair question to ask whether this still should be the case, as nowhere else has such a privilege. But despite the numerous attempts to challenge it in court, the flight restrictions over Disney property still remain fully in effect. Number 6. Tibet Covering an area of around 970,000 square miles, Tibet is in the Himalayas, and with an average altitude of 14,000 feet, is the highest region on Earth. Within its border is Mount Everest, which reaches a height just over 29,000 feet, making this a fascinating and beautiful place to visit. The Tibetan Empire first emerged on the Tibetan Plateau in the 7th century, and a few hundred years later had expanded to a huge territory around modern-day Tibet, too. The borders as they are today were essentially established during the 18th century, but its independence has always been disputed by China. This political instability and accusations of inhumane treatment have arguably held Tibet back from being able to develop an economy like elsewhere. But in recent years, and in part thanks to the increase in people wanting to mountain climb, tourism has significantly increased. This, though, has highlighted an interesting problem for the territory, and it's a question surrounding how visitors actually get there in the first place. As well as being home to the tallest mountain on Earth, there are plenty more towering peaks in Tibet, and this can make navigation pretty tricky. Commercial aircraft may fly at a higher altitude than any mountain, but most flight paths avoid them altogether just to remove any risks that there may be. So Tibet, in effect, has a naturally occurring no-fly zone. There are therefore only a few routes deemed appropriate to fly in and out of Tibet to its airport, and outside these areas the skies remain virtually free of aircraft. Number 5. Buckingham Palace and Windsor Castle As the official homes of the British royal family, Buckingham Palace in London and Windsor Castle in Windsor are two huge sprawling estates. Buckingham Palace was developed from a townhouse that was purchased by King George III in 1761, and it's now one of the most valuable private residences in the world, with more than 775 rooms. And Windsor Castle was originally used by Henry I in the 12th century, and is the oldest occupied castle in Europe. They were both, of course, designed in a way to fend off any dangers, but this was before the time when aircraft were being regularly flown, and with Buckingham Palace in particular being lived in not only by the monarch but for visiting dignitaries as well, the airspace above it has been restricted for decades. In assessing any future potential dangers, it was suggested that the airspace restrictions were also added, and the government signed off on this report, applying to planes, helicopters, drones, and any other type of remote aerial vehicle. You'll find yourself in serious trouble if you try to fly anything over these two buildings. Interestingly, the royal family also has airspace restrictions that actually moves with the senior members wherever they're around in the UK. Known as the Purple Corridor, it specifically relates to the flight paths of any aircraft in the area when a member of the royal family flies on a plane, and prohibits any from flying close to the plane that the royal is on, and even prevents any other aircraft from taking off or landing from the airport for 20 minutes before or after the royal plane has used the runway. This is regularly the cause for delays at some of the country's largest airports, but as it's for national security reasons, passengers aren't ever given the real reason for their late flight, and are instead told it has to do with the weather or a congestion on the runway. Number 4. Mount Vernon Set along the scenic banks of the Potomac River in Virginia, Mount Vernon, which, while it's of no strategic importance today, is an iconic American landmark. The historic estate was the former home of George Washington, the first president of the United States, after being acquired by his great-grandfather in 1674. George Washington inherited the property in 1754, and over the years he transformed it into a thriving plantation, encompassing 8,000 acres. 
The centerpiece of the estate is the stunning mansion, which is a two-and-a-half-story building in the Georgian style. The estate played a pivotal role in George Washington's life and the early history of the United States, as well as being his family home. It was also where he conducted business, welcomed guests, and entertained foreign dignitaries. Today, visitors to Mount Vernon can explore the restored rooms of the mansion to see what Washington's daily life would have been like, get a fascinating glimpse into the man who birthed a nation. The estate features beautiful gardens and landscapes that were designed and cultivated by Washington himself. The upper garden, the lower garden, and the botanical garden showcase a wide array of plants and flowers that are still kept how he designed them. Also, there are the final resting places of George and Martha Washington, with the tombs which are located on the grounds serving as a reminder of the couple's enduring love and their profound contributions to the nation. Today, Mount Vernon is a living museum, preserving the rich history and legacy of George Washington, offering educational programs, interpretive exhibits, and immersive experiences that provide visitors with a deeper understanding of the man behind the legend and the crucial role he played in shaping the United States. In honor of that, aircraft are banned around the house and the ground, and according to the website, even aerial photography is rarely permitted. Number 3. Phoenix Park Phoenix Park, which is located in the heart of Dublin, Ireland, is a sprawling urban park that's one of the largest walled city parks in Europe. First established in 1662 by decree of King Charles II, it spans over 1,700 acres of lush greenery and features a stunning range of different landscapes. Visitors can explore meadows, woodlands, and picturesque lakes, all within the park's boundaries, and its name is believed to have come from the Irish term Finoshka, meaning clear water in reference to the River Liffey that flows through it. The park is home to Dublin Zoo, which is one of the world's oldest zoos, having been established in 1830 and housing a diverse collection of animals from around the globe. But most importantly, the park is also where you'll find the official residence of the President of Ireland, which is a stately Georgian mansion. This, of course, is rarely accessible to the public, and it's surrounded by a security cordon to prevent any attacks from taking place. And it's also the main reason that the entire park's airspace is inaccessible to any aircraft, except for the Irish President's helicopter and the ones that are carrying visiting dignitaries. The result of this, though, is that the park is one of the quietest and most serene places in the whole city, where you can easily take a break from modern life and take in the beautiful surroundings. It's the only site in Ireland with such restrictions other than prisons or military bases, and a place of relaxation for countless residents of Dublin. Number 2. Mecca Mecca, which is in the western region of Saudi Arabia, is the holiest city in Islam and has a population of around 2 million people. It is, most famously, the epicenter of the annual Hajj pilgrimage, which sees many millions of Muslims from around the world travel there every year, with the focal point being the Kaaba, which is a cube-shaped structure located within the Grand Mosque. Muslims believe that the Kaaba was built by the Prophet Ibrahim and was considered the house of God. And during the Hajj and Umrah rituals, pilgrims walk around the Kaaba seven times counterclockwise as an expression of their commitment. Along with its religious significance, Mecca has a rich historical heritage, with the city dating back thousands of years, having been a vital trade hub and center for Islamic scholarship. As such a focal point of one of the world's major religions, though, Mecca has been the victim of numerous invasions and desecrations over the past 1400 years, so there's a number of rules in place to ensure the safety of all those who travel there. Non-Muslims, for example, aren't allowed to enter, and all aircraft are banned from the airspace above, except for in unusual circumstances. In 2006, for example, there was a tragic event when a hostel collapsed that killed 76 pilgrims and injured a number more. And on that occasion, rescue helicopters were allowed to bring assistance to those who were affected. Outside of events like these, there are no aircraft at all, reducing the chance of an attack and allowing pilgrims to carry out their religious practices in peace. Number 1. Washington, D.C. The capital city of the United States, Washington, D.C. was established in 1790, having been planned to be the center of American government, culture, and history. Designed by Pierre Charles L'Enfant, the city's grid-like streets radiate from the U.S. Capitol, showcasing a deliberate effort to symbolize unity between the northern and southern states. And this planned design is adorned with renowned monuments and buildings that narrate the story of American democracy. 
One of the most iconic features in the city is the National Mall, a huge green space that's lined with monuments and memorials that commemorate pivotal moments and figures in American history, such as the Washington Monument, the Lincoln Memorial, the Jefferson Memorial, the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial, and many more. As the seat of the U.S. government, Washington, D.C. is home to three branches of federal authority, the White House, the U.S. Capitol, and the Supreme Court. These institutions collectively govern the nation and are integral to the city's identity. Also close by at the center of the nation's defense is the Pentagon. But it's not just all about the government, it's also a vibrant cultural center too, with a number of world-class museums featuring priceless collections of art, history, and science, and several prestigious universities and research institutions like Georgetown University and George Washington University. As home to so many places for both national security and for the national identity, it's no surprise at all that there are some of the strictest airspace rules of anywhere in the world. In fact, there's a 30-mile special flight rules around Ronald Reagan International Airport, and it's because of this that the airport is renowned for one of the most nerve-wracking takeoffs and landings in the world. There may not be any mountains in the way, but pilots have to carefully navigate the no-fly zones and sometimes have to swerve around, which can be an uncomfortable experience for passengers. Any incursion into the no-fly zones can have serious consequences, something a pilot and flight student learned in 2005 when they accidentally veered off course and entered the restricted airspace, which resulted in the whole of the Capitol building being evacuated. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you to our channel members.